what is going on guys it is your boy Sisso here bring you guys yet another video here today bring you guys a video on how to get your very own clients from complete scratch now I actually did this video a very a kind of a long time ago it's, this is actually a little storyline I would say so if you guys want to know really quickly a little a little just before you kind of get in there and then just uh, I actually made a second ID so pretty much I made a second ID called Juxty Designs. No one in the entire community that I was I that was creating the community like I was no one even knew that I was gonna make a new account. No one knew I was gonna be even doing this video. So no one even knew that the tie between Cecil HQ and Juxty was there. I wanna make this very apparent because the people who were very kind enough to even do the things that they did for me is that's just that's just them. That's just on them, and I really appreciate those people very, 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 very much. So in the video, I just sort of I sort of show you guys excuse me oh god that it's very very easy to sort of i guess get your first clients it's not too hard whatsoever i actually got my first clients in under i think it was 12 hours i put 12 hours of actual work three days in total of the entire project and i got three clients in the entire thing and even to this day a month later i'm still getting people in the dm saying hey do you still do uh, logos for you know i'm looking for one for my company here's my budget i'm e i'm still even getting those clients i swear to you i promise you that i am i'll even show you guys my dms i'm still getting those people who are still asking me and it's really really awesome first of all it's humbling because i feel like i'm still i'm still a pretty good designer if i can get some clients right so that being said uh I guess before even starting off, I guess watching this video, just know that if it's if you're asking yourself also when is it time to charge, make sure you guys put your best foot forward. Even like you don't start charging right away. Put your best foot forward first. Practice, 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 and make sure you guys understand that there's actually a standard out there that you should be meeting before you even do something. And I and that sounds kind of harsh, but make sure you guys put yourself in a good standard. That way you don't have to have this weird price jump to when you know that you should be working for a lot more money. Right. So with those people being, you know, you know, you know, who are asked like, hey, when do I start charging? That is when I believe you should start charging. And I also do believe that I guess it wasn't really unfair because no one knew that I was Juxty. Right. So when I actually started doing this work, I was ready at this level that I felt like I practiced very, very much. And it really helped. And it very it just very much worked because as you can going to be seeing, it's it's honestly as easy as just being consistent making sure you have a really nice presentation, you're approachable, and you just know how to talk to people, right? So with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoy the video here today. And uh, yeah, I guess do not follow Juxty because I'm going to be closing that thing immediately as soon as this video goes up. And if I forget, make sure you guys remind me. And also, I don't even think it's a 200 like video. So I'm our two, like secret download. So basically, if you guys like the video overall, at the end, make sure you guys leave a like on it if it helped you at even a little bit, right? All right. So hope you guys enjoy. Peace. <laughs> All right, guys, first things first, and that's creating your own social media. Now, that is pretty much a given, I would say, nowadays, but for some people, it's kind of hard to sort of step into. It's kind of it's kind of scary not knowing what's going to happen, but I had done this for more than one reason. It's course, of course, I wanted to make my new second ID so that I can prove all of you guys that are watching this video cur currently that, like, it's possible, and I did do it, and I'm not lying. I'm not, I, no one knew that I actually made the second ID at all, and it was sort of a fresh start to see what happens when I apply the stuff that I'm going to be telling you guys in today's video, and, I, and it works. It not spoiler it does work right I get my first client now with that being said it's it's sort of like it's sort of scary like I said before but it's very very doable it's very easy to just sort of manage a little bit but at the same time you do need to manage it and you do need to make sure that you're staying on top of it with that being said once you make your own social media you need to of course brand yourself with a really simple logo it can be complicated you can of course I'll just go ahead and link some tutorials of how to make your own logo design and you know some tutorials and whatnot in the description down below so if you want to find anything of these I guess the things that I talk about in the description down below it should be there so when I'm talking about logo designs I branded myself with a a shard it was like a sort of a shard shape because I don't know I thought a shard was pretty cool it even it, need, it doesn't need to be a letter it does not need to be some sort of text logo it doesn't even need to be something that you spend hours and hours upon it was just something that I well I guess I would say that's kind of I would say it's kind of cheap to say because I've been doing it for so long so I can make myself something very I guess average in a very short amount of time however with that being said it's not the, the whole point is you don't have to spend five hundred dollars or you don't have to spend X amount of money on something that you just you don't, you're not sure about just yet right you still need experiments with it so with that being said just give yourself an idea for what you kind of want to do like I said watch a tutorial find something that just gonna brand yourself very simply you could even use a shape like I did myself with that also being said as well, I would say the number one thing you have to have on your Twitter if you're going to be using Twitter as your social media is have some sort of price list. I see a lot of designers do this. I don't do this currently because I have sort of a different outlook how I look like I but I can appreciate the whole thing of priceless, right? And let me explain why I did this and why I would price it or do it this way, right? 
So I know from experience, it's very hard to say, hey, this logo design, I'm gonna do it for $30. And it's hard to say, I'm gonna do $30 logo every single time. At, at the start, I did about $25 for a logo design, then I moved my way up to like 35, then I moved my way up to like 55, and now I'm pricing myself at $100 plus basically, right? And I'm getting clients consistently, and that's something because I've already made a name for myself. But however, with that being said, people who are starting out, it's very hard to be like, hey, I'm gonna do this logo for $30, and then someone says, hey, I saw you do logo for $30, uh, can you do this for amount of $30? And you're like, sure, yeah, it's a client, you're all happy, but you're not understanding how much work you're actually doing, you're not valuing yourself, and that's something that you really need to understand and take a grasp of so if you're gonna do price lists make sure you give yourself a range for me I chose $30 to $60 for logo design because I'm just starting out and I'm also trying to build my portfolio and I'm just gonna I'm gonna get more into that in the second version or second uh, I guess phase of this little video but price lists are very complicated make sure you give yourself the buffer right give yourself the minimum and give yourself the maximum that you're able to work with right so with that being said let's go on and head on to basically building your portfolio and building your brand basically all right guys and let me tell you what i mean by building your own portfolio now i don't actually mean building it building it as in like i guess choosing a site and sort of how to actually construct it i have videos on that i'll post in the description down below for you guys as well that we can see which sort of site is best for you what fits best and how to actually build it what I actually mean though is building your portfolio as in a strategy to basically, I guess, increasing your, your, your interactions, increasing the amount of people who know your name and stuff like that. What I mean by this is on Twitter, you should follow a lot of people that you sort of love and cherish and just sort of understand uh, or love the work, just people that you get inspired by basically, right? So I did that myself on Juxta Designs. I followed maybe like 41 people, absolutely none of them followed me back, but that was okay because I just get a really awesome feed of just, I guess, inspiration, consistency, and just like someone who's actually made it and just seeing that person do that should just be enough for you to sort of, it's not always enough, but it's sometimes just enough to, for just you to continue, right? But what I mean by this is you take those, uh, I guess those individuals and you might just practice, practice, right? Practice will definitely make perfect guys. And the craziest thing about practicing is, and using Twitter for your practice, is that you can make something for someone that you love so very much, and then they can sort of give you their tips upon what they think about it. So for me, I made a logo uh, for two individuals. I guess I'm gonna be showcasing the video. I made a lot more, trust me, but that was basically, this is this is basically what I'm talking about though. So I, I made one for Expect, but I also made one for Mixo in the beginning. The one I made for Mixo, I guess he responded back to me and said, hey, this is pretty cool. He didn't really follow me or anything like that, but he sort of just gave me that, uh, how do you say it? Just give me that feeling like, hey, I, I could do some really good work. And with that being said as well, I went ahead and added someone else and said, hey, who should I do next? Should I do expect next? And I use him for an example. And he, like I said, none of these people know that I was who I was. But I was like, hey, should I do you next for his example? And he said, like these really little googly eyes, you guys know what I'm talking about, like the looking eyes, like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to see this. So I'm like, all right, coming right up. So what I ended up doing was then making another logo design for that person who, just because I felt like making it, I like who he is, I, he inspires me and stuff like that and this should be people that you you should have names in your head that you probably already know of if i'm one of them i thank you very much for even appreciating i appreciate you very much for even appreciating me the way you guys do so very much i see it on twitter all the time but what i mean by this is you just take that person and just make something really just fun for them and then you might just get as lucky as i did and when i tweeted out to expect he immediately dm'd me and said hey like did you actually do this or did you use a font and he was just like it looks so professional so clean and he actually called me out and was like yo this is your second id i didn't actually tell him right there i was like no Dude, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to make something I'm just trying to make a name for myself get my first retweet and then he was so very kind enough and it's his own person it's his own person right because that's what these inspirators are they're just looking to help sometimes honestly right so what he did was just he was like he retweeted the actual original post which got me I guess to this day I think it's like maybe like like 36 likes and like maybe like 14 or something like uh or excuse me 36 like retweets and then like 40 or plus or something like likes something like that which is a pretty good ratio for someone who's just started that's a very very good boost it's a very great confidence boost and it just helped me sort of continue my way into like basically making something that i know i i hope i guess people would like and with that being said is that's how i sort of climbed my way to getting my first clients that alone was me building my portfolio help me get more clients to then i can actually build my portfolio with also client work but that's a very it's a very it's very risky in a way because you might get people who are like hey Sesso, I are you know not in this case but hey juxty did you uh hey can i get a logo as well i saw you do what's his names for free and straight up defend yourself be like no i did that logo because i was trying to build my portfolio don't lie i'm not lying to myself i'm not lying to that person i'm saying hey 
I did this because I'm trying to build my portfolio. So if you're looking for a logo that you like because you liked my work that I did for this X amount of persons or whatever I did for other people, be like, hey, my prices are this. You can, you know, if you have, if it's your budget, I will gladly want to do this logo for you or something or design for you, whatever, right? It works, guys. I'm not kidding. It does, does work. I promise you that very, very, very much. However, not everyone's going to get that lucky, but in order to progress, you need to make sure you take advantage of the time that you have and the opportunity that comes with consistency, which actually happens to be our next topic all right guys now what i mean by the word consistency it is actually not like me saying hey your designs always have to be tip top yada 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 it's not what i mean by that right even though that it should be a given but just know for the future reference guys you're gonna make things that you hate before you even finish them okay that's like a given just to, just know that so if you hate yourself right now for like not having this really good design that you thought in your head Honestly, as long as the client loves it, as long as you did what that client asked for, I'm guaranteeing you sure that like, you're gonna, you're, you're definitely gonna progress, right? But what I mean by the word consistency, I'm actually gonna put two other words in there. So I'm gonna say these two words here are what I feel like you're gonna be putting forth into the word consistency. So my two words I'm gonna be using is professionalism and presentation. Now I'm gonna start with professionalism first. What I mean by this is if you are one of those people out there who are retweeting really hot super hot half naked chicks you know i mean i understand that i understand i understand that we're, we're sometimes or half maybe half naked guys i don't know how many girls watch my stuff but we're gonna go with half naked individuals right that are just super attractive right so you guys know those people out there you guys know those you know weird memes that might offend people right so honestly if you look at yourself and you are one of those actual people tone it down a little bit i know there's personality out there i know there's people who want to see i guess in a different light right they want to be like funny they want to be you know approachable and stuff like that but there's a way to be approachable without also i guess ruining the atmosphere of your actual like social media so for me if you were to see my name on twitter you're gonna probably think three different things you're probably gonna think hey a new video either came out a new pre-made paper coming uh coming out or maybe he's gonna do one of those really cheesy quotes. You know, you don't think of me any other way. I don't think, I, I hope so, you know what I mean? So, but if you're one of those people who are retweeting out these really, you know, super hot, super hot chicks, um, I can see it, right? I can see it. But if I see your name, I'm gonna immediately think like, hey, where's where's that really hot girl? I'm not even gonna, even, I'm gonna probably forget that you're even a designer. So you wanna keep it consistent in that manner. Now that might have been a really weird and sort of like out of the blue or example, but it does make sense, right? Because I know there's people out there, the community is very fun, there's a lot of young people in the community, there's a lot of older individuals in the community, but there's there's a way to show off your personality without being just like odd about it. There's, it, there's that odd atmosphere that just sort of kind of ruins the vibe of how your, I guess, your, your brand is, right? So you want to build a brand, but you don't want to be... You don't want to be like that guy. You don't want to be that guy. So if you're one of those people, just make sure you're not one of those people. And if you're not one of those people, make sure you never be one of those people. So besides that itself, professionalism, there's also a way to construct your tweets. What I mean by this is if you're one of those individuals who are tweeting out maybe like things that I've been previously saying before, how you're using like, I guess, an inspiration. These are my air quotes that you can't see or inspirations or maybe just people that are really popular. You want to really help them out or just sort of use their name as your way of leverage, I guess you can say, but also building something really awesome for them. So if you're one of those people, make sure you construct your tweet in a really cool way as well because first impressions really really do like matter right but that's also moving into the presentation part but what i mean by this is sort of i guess like maybe construct your tweet with like hey low design made for blank you know insert name there you know and then also then add in like you know whatever your like little things that you did made it like maybe how, how you thought about it or maybe like why you did it for them some sort of like I guess cheesy line that's gonna be like, oh, that's so cute, and like retweet it in favor, you know what I mean? But you don't actually have to do that. I'm just saying, like, there's also ways to construct your tweets. Don't make it very lazy. Don't be like, hey, new logo design, like if like and appreciate it, thanks. Like that, is, that doesn't say like, hey, I care for what your opinion is, for what I, my projects are, right? So that's gonna help me move into the word presentation, right? So what I mean by this word here is everyone knows presentation is how you're gonna be first looked at, right? It's your first impressions, how is this gonna go? So if you're one of those individuals out there who were like me in the past, I do apologize for even leading people on, but I use the word logo concepts. So when I use that word in the past, what I meant by logo concepts is it's a logo and then those, this word concept here like slid into my mind. It was like, hey, this is a nice easy way to like make sure I don't have any color in my logo. And I can just say, you know, hey, there's your logo. But color is a very big part of logo design. Now I'm using a logo design a lot for my example, but that is what I use to sort of bring out my name and juxty and sort of get my first clients right so with that being said if you're one of those individuals who are using black concepts or white concepts on a black background or a white background and there's no color in your logo it hurts 
two different things. It hurts the client's brand because then they have to figure out this color. And if they don't have a consistent color, then they can't really be not like notified or excuse me, noticed right away with the color that you're using, right? So when you think phase, you think red, right? Red, blue, or red, blue, and yellow or something like that, right? Or when you think some sort of, maybe if you think me, maybe you think orange, I'm hoping you think orange because I'm trying to be using that color a little bit. But regardless, you see what I mean? Like you can see a color. If you think Google, boom, you think yellow, orange, and blue, or that, whatever the heck of color it is. But I know I see yellow in there, so that's what I'm saying, right? So make sure you guys understand that logo design and color make sense, they go together. So what I mean by this is when you're actually presenting maybe a logo design itself, choose even if it's not, if it, even if it's a gradient, a gradient actually matters as well. So if, or even a, just a solid color, it does not matter. Just make sure you have some sort of color in there because it'll help one thing and a, another thing. It'll help the brand itself that you're doing it for and it'll help yourself when you actually do a presentation for it. So what I mean by this is, uh, let's just say that I'm going to be using, I guess, the formula logo that I did, for example, right? So I had the formula logo. I had a really cool orangey red gradient in there. It looks really cool. So I made sure I had a white background for half of the actual document and then the actual gradient on the other half. So either one can be flipped onto each other, right? So I had the, I guess, gradient logo on that white background and I had a white logo on the gradient background. So that also gave me, hey, look how it looks like with two different uh, leverages of color, right? Also, it also helps you out if you also do more than just one or two colors. It might... Even if you do like, I'll say like max four or five. So it's not crazy to look at, but it really, really does matter. So when I mean my presentation, help yourself, right? So it's more than just first impressions. How about you show people the way you think, right? It's also, it's it's a kind of attractive thing to do. It's, it's also another personality thing, right? So if you say, for example, my Kiwi logo that I did, I had a logo for, let's say, I, I, I think I cut out a Kiwi. I said, I, I, I said that I did that, right? So what I mean by this is I put K plus Kiwi, plus like star, star burst, something like that, right? So I showed them a little construction, not even just a very simple way of doing it. I said, hey, I did this K logo, plus this Kiwi image that I use, what the starburst was, I combined it together, and that's how I created this logo. That's how I thought about this, and that's something that people will really respect, will really appreciate, and understand that, hey, this logo is actually more than just a logo. I see how he did it. He wanted to really enhance the brand, et cetera, et cetera, right? So presenting your work is not only making it look pretty, how about you also show people what you think and how you created it? It's just, it's a very attractive thing, right? It's, it's very easy to love you after that, right? When you sh like show the, the amount of work that you actually put into it. So with that little simple trick, I guarantee you, you'll get a lot more people like really appreciating your work and also having that same, I guess, outcome when they go to ahead and order from you themselves, right? I think that's pretty, I think that's a pretty good way to put it. Let's go, let's go ahead and go on to like, I guess the, if all else fails. <laughs> Now, if you guys are wondering what my all else failed actually happened to be, it was actually how I got my first client, but I did get two other clients. So trust me, the whole method that I was talking about before, it does work, but also this method does work as well. So what was my all else failed? Now, this is pretty simple. So there are clients out there who have no clue what they're looking for, how to look for them. So you have to sometimes be the person, if you're running low on clients, you just wanna help, I guess, build a portfolio. Some of these clients that are out there that just don't know where to look are some of your best examples and best, I guess, foot forward to actually get a client also build your portfolio as well. So what I mean by this is using the Twitter search, fun uh, search function and just tweeting out, or excuse me, I guess putting in the search function, looking for a logo designer or needy logo done, something that's very tag heavy that you'll get the people that you're actually looking for. And that's actually how I got a lot of my sort of responses back and forth in DMs. I went ahead and said, hey, I love to do this logo for you. Here's my budget. Here, I love to do this logo for you. This is what uh, you can be expecting. I just maybe link one of my works and stuff like that so they can see, you know, right away what they're actually gonna be receiving, right? Or what they're gonna be hopefully getting that standard that you're at, right? But with this DM, it actually started off with him asking me for my best logos in the esports, right? And I immediately told him after that, I do not have a portfolio, but I do have it on my media. Now, this is one of those examples that I was saying, like telling you guys to keep it professional, making sure you have all these, you know, professional looking tweets and stuff like that, just so that when this actual thing happens, if he were to go to my media and what he saw was this really high, I guess, work ethic, really awesome presentations, really awesome concepts, how I actually created them, he saw all this in his mind, he immediately had this really cool, like, I guess I would, you know, assume that he had this really good mindset that this person is trying their very hardest and they're going to really push the brand to like how I want it, right? But if he saw in between half naked girls and on like weird 9 11 jokes that are just like not funny for everyone, it's it might have put him off because you know, you know, what if something happens there and he just automatically says, like, it doesn't seem professional anymore, right? It does not seem like this person is really going to try their hardest, it does not seem like this person is going to give them the best. Best, I guess brand I guess from other people that they can choose from right so with that being said that example right there might be another way of like looking at it for making sure that you understand what you're putting out on your social media does actually matter it does influence the people that you're gonna be getting and who are you not gonna be getting right 
So the following that, he asked me, hey, can you like tell me what the colors you're thinking of? So I told him the colors, and for a lot of other actual DMs that I went ahead to, I gave them visuals as well. Some guy came up with me like a weird light, I guess, fixture company thing. He was like, hey, I'm looking for some like a little light uh, light example or light like a light company logo. And I was like, hey, I can I have this example here. I, I kind of worded it out, right? But as well as wording it out, I also gave them a visual, almost like a little small little brief. And it was, it was even even the smallest thing in paint or even in like, using a brush to like quickly draw it out and then just like showing them some sort of visual will give them that next step to saying like hey I can see how the local house is gonna look and I can also see like what work ethic is gonna be put forth because you already gave me something without even paying any like a penny so once he said that he immediately said let's do it that's what he said like it was that it was that simple he, I showed him what my work was I showed him the ideas I told him what my ideas were and he loved it so once he did that I said okay send me your PayPal email for a invoice and I'm gonna make sure I emphasize the word invoice because you guys should be using invoices if you're using PayPal as your method because sending money back and forth is not the way to do it there's no sort of like there's like that fine line because if honestly if they charge back those nasty nasty little chargebacks if you guys want to know my little secrets to them using invoices it's your invoices honestly because people who do charge back there are people out there who are just going to try to just i don't know why these evil people do these things but they're going to try to ruin you and just try to like get things out for free right because people love things that are for free but with that being said it was very very simple because sort of chargebacks are 50 50 until someone can show that extra proof that invoice is the extra proof. It's sort of like a, almost like a little mini contract within PayPal. So that way they can help you out a lot more when I guess a chargeback happens that's like very unfair and not actually the truth of what the chargeback was actually meant for, right? So an invoice should be constructed, hey, hey I'm gonna deliver by this date, hopefully, uh, if any extended time is needed, back and forth examples were traded in, uh, traded in from one another, then I can extend that time, right? Also with having that, make sure you also give them, hey, if I do not get it by this time and I'm not, I, if I lost contact with you, hey, go ahead and excuse me, charge it back because that's going to help that, that client itself be sort of protected as well, right? So just understand that it's going to protect you and the client and it just makes everything just feel very, very good when you go ahead and say, yeah, uh, you're going to have to pay up for it, like up front. <laughs> I always do that myself because I feel like it helps me, uh, uh, just why not, right? Why not? I'm going to get the money anyway, so just why not all pay it forward and also, you know, if you want to do half and half, sure, but just I think you should always demand the money right there and then because it's a service that you're paying for, so they should always pay ahead of time, right? So once I sent the invoice, once I constructed it, we went ahead and he just paid it off. Very simply, right? So honestly, that's pretty much it. There's no real secret to it. It is just consistency, and you also want to make sure you protect yourself as well. And with that being said, I, I guess that's pretty much it. I don't know. I want to say too much else because it doesn't really, I want to ramble on too very much because I you know it's a video. It's not really on like a, like a live stream or something like that and like answering a question. But this is how I believe that you can get your first clients from scratch. I did it my very, very self. I maybe spent maybe three days in total. Uh, I've, or of course, the, it's been like maybe a month after I've done this actual sort of whole experiment, but I did it and I'm still getting DMs to this day without even posting or tweeting for like the past two weeks that people want to actually get logo designs. And I've, of course, I declined them because I no longer need the client right now, right? I, I would, I'm telling me, hey, I'm actually Sesame HQ doing a video later on. You'll see in the future, yada, yada, yada. You can go over here. I, you're not going to get my logos for you know cheap. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm getting that because that's what social media does for you. It really, really does help. And making sure you keep it consistent and professional. I'm going to keep saying these words because they really do matter. It, you will definitely, honestly, get your first client. So... Thank you very much for freaking watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Sesso HQ out.